It began back in 4584. From the great city of Corvosa, a paladin of Aradin called Alcadian Indros led an expedition to the unknown parts of western Varizia. Indros and his fellow explorers, who were known as the Wardens of the Eye, traveled to what early Corvosan explorers had dubbed the Lost Coast. Here, they discovered a spot along the Lost Coast where the Mushfens and the Yandavakari River came to an end in the shadow of an immense limestone escarpment. Even more impressive, built upon the limestone and stretching out over the water was the ruins of an immense bridge that we now know as the Iaspan or the Giant's Bridge. It was here, on the shores of what is now known as Outcast Cove, that Indros battled and defeated the Vaidraj, a gigantic and terrifying sea monster. After the monster's defeat, he and the rest of the Wardens of the Eye went back to Corvosa. Back then, the great city was a colony and a part of Chiliax, but when the god Arodin died in 4606 and Chiliax went into civil war, the city lost its connection to the nation. The government struggled, and more and more people grew tired of the conditions they were living under in the new city-state. They saw the government as close-minded and tainted by the old and outdated traditions. And when it was clear that they couldn't change the ways of the government, thousands of citizens decided to leave in search of better ways. Alcadian and the Wardens of the Eye guided the pilgrims and traveled west across Verisia. They led them back to the spot they had found some 22 years before. It was here that Alcadian and the settlers decided a new city should be built. The very city will be arriving to in moments. Now I must admit, even though I've been selling my pottery in this city for years, every time I arrive it's breathtaking. Have a look my friends, I give you Magnemar, the city of monuments. the side, eh? To think that this magnificent city is but little more than a century old. The enormous broken bridge you see is the Aya Span, and the ridge of the 300 foot tall escarpment it stretches from is known as the Sea Cleft. Now Magnemar is divided into two parts, the summit, which is the part of the city that's on top of the escarpment, and the shore, which is the part beneath it. The summit is where you'll find the upper class, and the shore is where you'll find everyone else. Well, there is actually a third section called the Shadow. It's the part of the city that lies in the shadow of the Iaspan, and it's where you have the most unfortunate and most ruthless souls of the city. I'd advise you not to go there, but then again, the freedom to do so is yours, especially in Magnemar. It is the city where freedom can never be lost. That's the saying Magnemarians like to utter, and I guess it's true to a certain extent. Magnemar opens its gates and harbor to anyone who wishes to trade and would shape their own fate through hard work and keen wits. The majority of citizens are humans of Chelish descent, or a mix of Chelish and Verisian. But while these people are of Chelish descent, they are anything but in mind and spirit. People in Magnemar prefer to be called Magnemarians. The city also boasts of having the largest semi-settled population of Verisians in the region. There are of course significantly fewer of them in the traveling months of spring and summer. But still, you'll find Verisian camps throughout most of the shore at any given time. Besides the permanent citizens of Magnemar, you have thousands of regular traders and emissaries from all over the inner sea, particularly from Absalon, Chiliax, and Osirian that have homes in Magnemar and live in the city for days, weeks, or months at a time. 
And so, there are several months of the year where it's possible to find an entire city block that seems more or less deserted. Oh, and a good thing to know is that most citizens dislike Corvosa with a passion Master. and even call it Little Chiliax. The two city-states are, after all, rivals that compete over coin, trade, vassal communities, and natural resources. Magnemar is ruled by the office of the Lord Mayor and the Council of Ushers. While the Lord Mayor is the most politically powerful person in the city, the Council of Ushers is the most powerful political institution. There is also a third political body operating outside of the city government, called the Vivician Council. It was formed some 80 years ago to ensure that the Magnamarian government didn't infringe upon the rights and traditions of the lands of Verisian natives that live in and near the city. The city was founded by those who refused to live under the old and rule-filled traditions of Corvosa, and so Magnema has relatively few laws. Of course, the basics are there. Don't steal, don't kill, that sort of thing. Any time there's a more serious dispute on the law that the City Watch can't solve, the case is taken to the esteemed Justice Court. Thirteen justices form the highest court in the city. They settle arguments and decide the innocence or guilt of those brought before them. But Magnamar is of course much more than the government and how it is being ruled. It is the City of Monuments, and it's called that for a reason. You'll find monuments all over the city in all kinds of shapes and sizes, usually depicting a historical event, a battle, an angel, or a person that is linked to Magnamar in some way or another. Some monuments are of course more famous than others, usually the bigger ones. Whoa! Alright, I brought you to the city gates like we agreed. Thanks for the coin and the tails. Sounds like you've been through quite a bit. But what doesn't kill you makes you stronger, right? I'll be going to the Passar of Sales to sail my wares now. It's been an honor meeting you. And remember, whether you need a pot for flowers or a pot to piss in, Reg the Potter has got what you're missing. <laughs> Take care. Yep. You there. Yes, you lot. You're new to Magnamar, aren't you? It's easy for me to tell. I have a keen eye for such things, and it seems like you could use some help getting to know the city. I'm Raimi Brothford, known as Raimi Greenskin, or you can call me Raimi. I think we might be of benefit to one another, see I happen to make a living of showing strangers like yourselves around. You know, Magnamar can be quite overwhelming. Even a single district can be intimidating if you don't know what's what. But, for a small fee, I can help you with that, and I'll make it worth your while. Sounds like a deal. Very well. Right now, you're in the Odilia district, named after the famed Odilia Wildren. Story goes that long before the settlers came to this location, it had been a favorite resting site for Verician caravans. It was regarded as a blessed place where angels would rest and where, if you were lucky enough, you could get a glimpse of one and gain good fortune. So, the Verisians were not too fond of the settlers building an entire city on what they saw as holy ground, and who could blame them? They asked the settlers if they could move their newly built homes west of the Yandabakari River. Freshly settled, the settlers and their leaders were defiant and had no intention of doing so whatsoever, except for one of the leaders. One of the four members of the Wardens of the Eye, Mistress Odilia Wilren. She promised to move west of the river if they would show her one of these angels they claimed frequented the site. The Verisians, being mysterious as they are, told her to keep an eye on the sea cliff spire at dawn every day for seven days. Odilia Wilren did so, and on the seventh day, she saw an angel atop of the spire. She kept her promise and moved west of the Yandabakari with her followers to where the Adelia district lies today. Some years after, a terrible dark storm threatened to destroy everything the old settlers had built. Odilia Wilren prayed to the angels she had seen atop the sea cliff spire, 
and the angel heard her. Lightning cracked down upon the spire that exploded into a thousand pieces of glass and rubble, and in doing so, the blast scattered the dark storm clouds, revealing the stars above our city. The settlers who now firmly believed in the stories of the angels attached to the site agreed to build a great tower to replace the fallen spire. As workers laid their first stones, local Verisians came and helped with the construction of the tower. For now, the settlers shared the Verisians' faith. The tower they built is the Arvin Sor, and the angel that answered Ardelia Wilvin is known as the Angel of the Arvin Sor. To this day, many in the city still worship or at least pay homage to the same angels as they did a hundred years ago. Ordelia Wilvrin, bless her spirit, was killed by a scorny thug that was hired by a noble with criminal ties. They say it was done in an attempt to cause great attention between the settlers and the local Verisians. Fortunately, it did the opposite and made the bond between the Verisians and the settlers stronger. Some claim that to this day, Odelia still walks the district, helping those in need. Several of the local militia swear that they have seen her ghost at night while they're patrolling the district. I just think they get too bored, and maybe they're having a little too much air while they're doing their rounds. If you got drunk enough, you'd be seeing ghosts all night as well, wouldn't you? Odelia Wilren is known as the Mistress of Angels, and that's also the name given to the monument portraying her right over there. Some of the monuments in Magnamar are said to have magical powers, and if you perform the right acts of worship, you'll be granted special blessings. I have my doubts about that though, I've been praying to a multitude of gods in front of several monuments, and I don't look like I've been blessed now, do I? But still, I can't complain too much. Even an ugly half orc like myself has a place in Ordelia. Magnemar is an open city, and most people are welcome here, no matter their heritage, especially in the Ordelia district. Welcome. To the rest of the city, it's known as the Foreign District. Officially, it's known as that because this is where many visitors from other nations stay. But unofficially, it's also a reference to those with foreign blood because this is where most non-humans in the city lives. That's also why many Magnamarians like to call our district the Mush, because of its diversity and it's a wordplay on Ordelia's proximity to the Mush fence. Ordelia and Magnamar as a whole is a place for anyone and everyone. That said, some citizens are less tolerated than others particularly the city's Shuanti population. You might hear fashionable people speak of the Shuanti with fascination and admiration, about how they live in clans and survive the wilderness and what interesting culture they have. But that kind of talk is reserved for the Shuanti that lives in the wild. The tune changes a lot when talking about the Shuanti that lives in the city. A lot of citizens don't really like them. They have a hard time in Magma and tend to be poor and underprivileged. Many of them are exiled from their tribe for whatever reason and now live in a place where they are feared and discriminated against. Even the government is prejudiced towards the Shuanti, making their life even harder for them. It's a shame, but then again, a lot of them tend to cause trouble, form violent gangs and act like thugs. To the Shuanti, Magnamar is just another wilderness and the problems they cause are out of proportion to their meagre numbers. It's not all of them that are like that, of course, but many are, and it's enough to make people distrust most of them. How that problem is to be solved, I don't know, but I don't expect the government to find any solution. The needs of any underprivileged citizen never really seem to concern the Lord Mayor too much. I hear he's more concerned with the latest fashion and his own comforts. Another reason to why it's good that Ordelia, in many ways, is its own city apart from the rest of Magnemar. The government doesn't always do what's best for its citizens, and many seem to have forgotten that Magnemar was founded on freedom and leaderless rule. Here in Ordelia, we try as best we can to emulate that freedom, and even though we're dependent on the government, we try not to expect too much, as we rarely get much support from it. Let's take the city watch patrols, for example. Officials say it's difficult to do full rounds of the city when they have to cross the river and include the mush, and they claim it causes traffic on the bridge to halt. I don't know about that, 
but as a solution, Odilia has formed its own watch to patrol the streets. It mostly consists of hired mercenaries, adventurers looking for some extra coin, or even nail knights from time to time. You know, hell knights. It suits us fine, and we take great pride in taking care of ourselves. As much as we can, anyway. We're still very much dependent on the government's support when it comes to infrastructure and such. See that building over there? In there are the offices of Odilia Small Council. See, Odilia has its own council that officially is a subset of the Council of Ushers. The Small Council, as we call it, is left to take care of business in the district as it sees fit, as long as reports meet the Council of Ushers' satisfaction and taxes are paid on time. Council members are elected by Odilians and serve a two-year term before going up for re-election. One member of the small council is Lady Ansa Shivarlo. She's a good-hearted lady of Mawanki descent that has a sharp mind for politics. She's managed to get herself elected to the small council six times in a row. Now that's impressive, and it's not just in politics she excels. She also produces and directs plays at the Rose and Rake Theatre, a large building on our right. It's an open-air theatre, and people from all over the city come to enjoy the social satires and political commentaries that entertain here. Even those that would openly dislike our district find their way to the Rose and Rake. The theatre also serves as a place where citizens can hold town hall meetings and other large gatherings, outside of entertainment hours, of course. The two-story building on our left flying several different flags is Magnamar's Embassy Building. When Magnamar first was founded, the city sent out invitations to many nations in the inner sea, offering them a place in the city in exchange for some sort of Magnamarian presence in their capitals. Several turned down the offer, thinking our city would fail within a few years. A choice I'm certain they regret today now that Magnamar has become the second largest city in Varizia. Our city officials took it as an insult, of course, and withdrew any further invitations to those same nations. Now, the nations of Absalon, Andoran, Chiliax, Katapesh, Osirian, Kadira, Zagava, Taldor, and Ustalav all maintain embassies in that building. It gives those nations certain benefits when it comes to trade, such as lesser tariffs and what have you. The building also holds a wing to little Chiliax, but it's mostly empty except for those rare occasions when a Corvosan representative is in the city. But yeah, if you have any inquiries about those nations, this is a good place to start. If you walk down the Sprint, which is the street on our left, you'll come to Odilia's docks and the Magnamarian branch of Red Kestrel Imports. Red Kestrel is a cellist trading company that trades a wide variety of wares between five nations and our city. The five nations are Absalom, Chiliax, Katapesh, Sargava, and Osirian. You'll see these nations' flags fly above the door of their large waterfront warehouse. The administrator of the Magnumarian branch is a cellist man called Anton Ganafini. He always smells a bit like sweat, even on the coldest of days, and he seems to lack most of his eyebrows at times. Don't ask me why, but despite him looking a bit weird, he seems to know what he's doing. A little further from the waterfront, you'll find some of Odilia's most popular establishments as well. One is Scabner's Fine Tomes, a small publisher that specializes in reprinting rare tomes. Willard Scabner is a nice old man who sees his job as a highly important one, and I suppose it is, if you can read and if you like old books. It's certainly a place many adventurers want to drop by, and who knows, might be there's a tome concerning your subject of interest, whatever that might be. Not too far from Scavner's fine tomes lies Bilivin's Benevolent Balms. Bivola Bivolin is a gnome that might just be Magnemar's most scatterbrained spellcasting merchant. He sells all kinds of potions and balms, but you're never sure that what you buy does what he says it does. He has so many crooked shelves filled with vials, bottles, scrolls, weird ingredients and all kinds of things in such a chaotic mess that I get dizzy just by looking at them. Funny thing is that none of the things on the shelves are for sale. He's a special fella, that's for sure, but he does have one product that makes him very popular. He calls it Bilivar Bilivin's most effulgent brain tonic. 
It's supposed to prevent diseases or cure them if you've taken ill. Everyone who's tried it says it works, but it's supposed to have a foul taste and it turns your teeth purple for a couple of days. I prefer to take my chances with a prayer to Saren Ray when I get sick. I suspect you plan on visiting some of the other districts as well, so let's just head straight up this way, over the bridge that'll lead us to- Out of the way, out of the way! Can you please move aside? <gasps> well, I'll never- That's Morgan my Pug. He has an establishment down that way that sells minor clockwork marbles, wind-up toys, and other unusual trinkets. In a hurry, Morgamar. Raimi, all these people... Well, it is the start of the day. Everyone is going about their business. Yes, I know. And so are you, I see. Hello, I'm Morgamar Pug, owner of Pox Contraptions. If you haven't heard already, we have all kinds of non-magical wonders, and we even do commissions if the idea for your gadget is possible. Come by the shop sometime, Raimi here can show you the way, he is after all the best guide in the district. Why that's nice of you Morgama. Yes, I didn't say it to be nice, anyway, I must get back to my grandson with these parts and open up shop. Good day to you. You too Morgama. Excuse me madam, there should be enough street for both of us. Such a rude halfling. He seems a bit bitter, I know, can't blame him really. He inherited pox contraptions from his father and intended to leave it to his own son, Boscard. But something happened some years ago while Boscard was delivering a beautiful clockwork nightingale to the Voldemar family in the town of Sandpoint. The clockwork reached its destination, but after that, Boscard went missing. Morgamar is convinced that his son was killed by a horrible serial killer called Chopper that terrorized the small town some years back. Might be, unfortunately, no one knows. Now he's passing on his knowledge to Boscard's son, Spiven and preparing him to take on the task his lost father was supposed to. Tragic, really. Well, as we cross the bridge, we come to the part of the Odilia district that lies on the Yonder Bakari. This island is officially called Kyver's Islet, but we Odilians like to call it Little Beacon. We call it that because the island is a place for workers, like Beacon's Point is a workers' district, and the island has a lighthouse as well. It's right over there, and it's called the Floodlight. Other than that, Kyver's Islet mostly consists of lumber mills, tanneries, granaries and other noisy and smelly workshops. Officials found it best to place these away from the homes and the quieter businesses of the district and they are made for the perfect location. The higher-ups from Beacon's Point have lobbied for decades to make the island part of their district because the industries here bring in a lot of income. They haven't managed to do so yet though and Ordelia won't give it up without a fight. Neither will the lumber mills here on Kyver's Islet, for they're the only major McNamarian industry not affiliated with a guild. You'll find more guilds than necessary throughout the city, but not for the lumber mills on Little Beacon. They're all individually owned and free to keep all their profits to themselves. Of course, that comes with a certain risk, and as a result, many lumber mills switch as owner frequently. But I still don't think they would have it any other way. The bridge here leads out of Adelia and to the other districts of Magnamar. I'd show you the rest of the city, but Adelia is what I know and it wouldn't be fair for me to charge you for the rest. The large street in front of us is Split River Way and on your right you have the Keystone District and on your left you have Beacons Point. It was a pleasure showing you around and remember, if there's anything else you need to know about Adelia, I might very well have the answer for you. You can usually find me by the Mistress of Angels Monument. You all have a good day now. No, no, no! Mm -hmm. Curse me luck. Move aside, woman. You're blocking the whole road. Well, I just dropped one of me barrels, didn't I? Well, then roll it off to the side. No, I won't. I need it up on me wagon. Madam, you'll have to move away from the road. Would you hold on? I can't lift it myself. You lot there, could you help a lady out? Yeah, just put it up there like the others and I'll tie him in place. Oh, would you come on? Oh, shut it. There. Are you happy now? Thank you, madam. Well, it's not my barrel or my fault. What a bucket. Didn't even have the decency to help a lady out. Good thing you were there. You adventurous? Mercenaries for hire? Or maybe just well-armed tourists? You're certainly from out of town, that's for sure. Oh, 
I apologise. Me manner seems to have been forgotten. I'm Laura Ninbury, married to Romans Ninbury the Cooper. Did you notice the barrel didn't break when it fell off the wagon? That's good craftsmanship right there. But me husband should have tied those barrels better and not have me bothering you to help me fix his mistakes. I might not be old, but I am getting older and a barrel like this is starting to get too heavy. So, thank you. How about I give you a ride to wherever you're going? Oh, you're exploring the city, are you? Well, I'm headed up past the Wormwatch in Beacons Point to deliver these barrels. After that, I'll be heading home, which isn't too far from here, but I can ride up a tradeway and throw you off Sear Spring Garden. Why don't you come along and I'll tell you a bit about the district? All right. Have a seat on the barrels, they're sturdy as can be, made from strong oak, and I've tied a proper knot now, so don't you worry about falling off. Come along, Aussie. Anyway, this district is called Beacons Point, and it's a district of industry and hard-working folk. It's home to sailors, traders, and art-living families of all sorts, warehouses, shipping concerns, taverns and brothels, and numerous other businesses fills the area. <laughs> Peculiar smell, isn't it? The smell of something that could have been good in a small dose, but now is so overwhelming that it's disgusting. That clawing smell comes from over there, where you see all the tents, Parisian wagons and washing watts. That's Washer's Row. There, everything from a ship's sail to its crew members' clothes are washed and cleaned while the ship's in port, if the captain deems it's necessary. But many do. The smell comes from the mixture of soap and chemicals used by the workers doing the washing. It's a poor kept secret that the businesses of Washers Row are run by one of Magnemar's largest Scarny gangs, the Wash Site Ringers. I think it's a profitable business, and I can't claim to know that Washers Row is a cover for anything. But with a Scarny gang involved, I suspect not everything at Washers Row is completely legit. Anyway, not everything in Beacons Point is as it seems on the surface. As you can see, here the streets are clean and a lot of the buildings are large and sturdy, made of wood and stone. The facade is nice all along Outcast Cove and the district borders. But the further towards the heart of Beacons Point you come, the more you see the district crumbling apart. At the core of Beacons Point, you'll find Rags End. Here most buildings are made of wood, with many being haphazardly repaired from recycled lumber or whatever could be found to fix a broken door or cracked wall. Some of them buildings even depend on the structure of the neighbouring buildings to keep them standing. It's here you'll find some of the poorest and the most unfortunate of the city's working class. Out of job dockhands, drunks, crippled labourers and workers that for some reason or another can't do the job they've been doing all their lives. Many get by by doing everything from begging to ungrateful and demeaning work. Yes, Max End is a place of sad destinies and poverty. The Night Scales, which is Magnemar's most notorious thieves' guild, are quite active in Rags End. The watch never goes there, and one gets the impression that the Lord Mayor never heard of the place. I'm sure he has, but he doesn't seem to care too much about it. And so, obviously, it's more or less run by criminals. Heed me words. If you go there, you'll be wary of the name Vesimiri Jaijako. Listen here, buddy. He's a half Verisian drug dealer that has all kinds of scum working for him, and he more or less runs Rags End. He's got ties to the Gallowed, one of the city's most infamous Scarny gangs. He owns many of the shacks and buildings in Rags End, and he rents them out to poor souls that can't afford better. All the while, he himself resides in Jaijako Castle. Now, it in no way looks like a castle. It's really just a collection of shanties and tenements, but that's what they call it. And I'm sure there's more to it than meets the eye. The castle is decorated with all kinds of hellish decor, and people whisper that he's made a pact with a devil to get to the position of power he's in now. So if you know what's good for you, you best stay away from there. Anyway, like I said, there's plenty of industries in Beacons Point and a fair share of guilds here as well. If you ask me, Magnima has too many guilds. Why well, just in Beacons Point alone we've got the Carpenter's Guild, the Cooper's Guild, the Dung Sweeper's Guild, the Locksmith's Guild, the Shipmaker's Guild 
a rope makers guild, the butchers union, the most excellent order of smiths, and of course, but we edit the outcast fishery, the fishermen's union. So quite a lot, and that's just in one district. We'll get to the outcast fishery soon enough, but I wouldn't be giving justice to the district if I just rode by the famed monument on the square right in front of us. The Battle of Chada. It depicts the first and most famous nautical battle waged in the city's early days. It was pirates from Riddleport versus Magnemar's great navy. The pirate's fleet was commanded by the wicked captain Javena Skrin, also known as Captain Winterkiss. Through magic, she had charmed five monsters known as Chardas and had them aid the pirates in the attack. If it hadn't been for the bravery of Anthelus Cadron, one of Magnemar's founders and great heroes, our city might well have been sacked. He broke the spell that Captain Winterkiss had cast on the monsters and had them turn on her. He lost his life in the battle, but saved the city and defeated Captain Winterkiss and the Charters. Some say that the Charters, depicted here, are the real ones petrified. From the very same battle? Honestly, I don't know how to feel about that. If it's true, of course. But if it is, I mean... Could you imagine some drunk maids all of a sudden unpetrifying them? I'm sure that'll turn out great. Anyway, let's keep moving. If you look past the monument, you can see the worm watch. This tall lighthouse is what gives name to the district. It stands 80 something feet, but it looks even larger because of the bluff it's standing on. And on the catwalk right below the light, there's always stationed four sharp eyed guards. The tower is made of stone and the light is made of glass and bronze and crafted in the shape of a coiled dragon with too big of a mouth. Inside this mouth is a beacon of brilliant light that can warn off ships on the darkest and most stormy of nights. Most of Magnemar's navy keeps a presence on the docks below with the remaining using the facilities at our destination, which is right here. The outcast fishery. Well, here we are. Could you help me get the barrels down? The, the outcast fishery serves as sort of a gill hall and many fishermen and women gather in the whole seaside tavern over there. It's called the left-handed lobster and it's a members only kind of thing. Fishing is one of our city's most important industries and quite a number of fish comes through here. There are three large warehouses where fish can be stored and several dry docks where fishing boats can launch from and have repairs. Lots of fish means lots of barrels to store them in, and that means more work for me and my husband. Now, of course, we do have a lot of competition, as we Oi. can't... Oi! You can't place those barrels there! Says who? Well, it says me! And who the hell are you? I, I'm Steve, and I work here. Do you have a delivery or pickup to make? Well, of course I have, Steve. These barrels are bought and paid for by the outcast fishery and they are to be delivered to Pavo. Pavo, you say? Well, my apologies, madam. You've got a bit of a special group with you there. I thought you might have been with the mercantile navy. And why would that have been a problem? Because we don't deal with those bastards. All right, that's pretty hostile. Well, it's deserved hostility, if you ask me. The merchant's vessel's been bringing in so much traffic the latest seasons, it's been scaring off the fish and forcing us to do our fishing further and further away from shore. And that's a problem for you, eh? Why, yes. How'd you like to walk an extra mile when you go to work? Besides, the sea's a dangerous place, ma'am. And the traffic also makes it hard for us to navigate the harbour. I'm sure the harbour master is doing his best to make everyone happy. Now Steve, if you would be so kind to let Pavo know that his delivery is here and tell him Laura and Roma's Ninbury says hi. Alright madam, I'll make sure he gets your message. Oi, you lots, come over here and give me a hand with these barrels. Yes sir, of course sir. He seemed quite angry with the mercantile navy, eh? Don't know too much about that. But one thing I do know, it's a bad idea to piss off a fisherman. Anyway, in there lies the Shipmaker's Guild. It's owned by one of Magnemar's most powerful families, the Scarnettis. Well, it's said that the family owns it, but a third of the shipyards are on loan to Magnemar's navy and has been so since its early days. See, back when Magnemar was founded, the city funded the construction of the guild in return for free military use of a portion of the docks. 
So basically, the city gave the Scarnettis a loan to build the guild. So even though the guild is owned by the Scarnettis, a third of the docks can rightfully be used as the navy sees fit. It's said that the Scarnettis have more than enough money to pay the loan back many times over and have tried to do so more than once. But the McNamarian government doesn't seem too willing to let him do so. At least that's what I've heard. Anyway, the three-story building there is where you'll find McNamara's harbour master, Bird Eigert. He's a spry old Varishian man who chose to leave the travelling ways of his people and settle down in McNamara. You'll hear other Varishians call him Mossback now and then, which apparently is an insult to Varishians that prefer to stay in one place and not travel like most of them. He doesn't seem to mind, and why should he? He's been appointed the job as harbour master by the Council of Ushers themselves, based on merit alone. Not that it would require much to replace the former harbour master, Drunken Odie Fixen. They sacked him without blinking an eye, something I gather he isn't too happy about. But who cares? Harbour Master Eigert is ten times better and loved by most who know him. Anyway, we're nearing Seer Spring Garden and you must be wanting to see other parts of the city. But if you want to hear more about Beacon's Point, I'm sure you'll find someone willing to share their knowledge at one of the district's many taverns. I'd recommend the Whale's Belly. It has a lot of dock workers and labourers that without a doubt has a thing or two they can tell you. Stay away from Fergie's shack and the pig, though. They're both foul and rat-infested places and lies in Rag's end. Like I've already said, you're better off staying away from that slum. Anyway, I hope you've gotten something out of this little ride. I, for one, am very thankful for your help and the company. In front of you lies Seer Spring Garden and the Keystone District. I must be getting back to my husband and teach him how to tie a proper knot. Gina sucked his blessings upon you, travelers. For there are none who understands the stars more than Desna, my dear Lace. On that we agree, my lady, but you can learn much through divination magic. Perhaps, but I am content on what Desna teaches me. But there is so much knowledge in the arcane. As there is in the divine, my friend. And I trust the Song of Spheres to guide me on the right path, which, at this very moment, is back to the temple. But it's such a beautiful day, my lady. Too beautiful to enjoy without company. I'm sure you'll think of something, dear Lace. We'll catch up some other day. Until then. Until then, my lady. Well, aren't you an interesting bunch? Let me guess. You're not from around here, are you? One does not have to be a master in the school of divination to come to that conclusion. Ah, but I forget myself. My name is Laius Nivlandis, and I am the headmaster of the Stone of the Seers. Magnamel's most esteemed school of wizardry. I'm on my way to Castlegate to meet a new pupil who have come all the way from Little Chiliax to attend my school. It's not something I normally do, but I need an excuse to get outside this fine day. Care to join me? I devote most of my time buried in books and teaching. It would be nice to talk to someone that isn't a student. Perhaps I can tell you a bit about the area along the way, hmm? Excellent. As you very well may know, this is the Keystone District, and as I've already stated, I am the headmaster of the Stone of the Seers where we specialize in abjuration and divination magic. It's a small school, but not because we lack applicants, mind you, merely because I want the best for my pupils and wish to give them as much of my personal attention and learning as possible. That's what makes my school one of the best there is. I'm aware that sounds like I'm boasting, but I'm simply telling you the truth. But you're not accompanying me to hear about my school of wizardry, even though I can tell some of you might know a bit of magic yourselves. No, let me tell you about where you are this very moment. The Seer Spring Garden. The garden is named after the Seer Spring that stands right over there. It is a spring of crisp and clear water, 
and it more or less stands in the middle of the shore. The spring used to be the home of a water spirit oracle, but she departed many decades ago. She foretold she would come back some time in the future, though when that's supposed to happen, I can't tell. The bronze statue that stands in the spring portrays her, though no one seems to know who built it. It's called Our Lady of Blessed Waters, and it is one of Magnemar's famed monuments. I met her once, before she left. She was quite interesting. She is actually what inspired me to open my school and call it the Stone of the Seers. But there I go, talking about me and my school again. Let me tell you about the district instead. Two neighborhoods dominate Keystone, the Marches and the Silver Shore. At this very moment, we are in the Marches. It is where the majority of Magnemar's middle class lives, such as craftsmen, merchants and simple shop owners who aren't wealthy but content with what they have. The Marches don't receive much when it comes to maintaining the area or protection for that matter. So you'll see representatives from several churches patrolling the streets. Not that we have an awful lot of crime, but Scarny pickpockets and scammers have been more active lately. By Silver Shore it's noticeably different. It's well patrolled, cleaner and has more fashionable buildings. That's because Silver Shore is the wealthiest neighborhood you'll find below the summit. It is inhabited by well-off merchants, business owners, aristocrats and even council members. It faces the mouth of the Yonder Bakari and those who choose to live there do so to either be closer to their businesses, the common folk, or simply because they wish to live near the beauty of the river. Both the marches and the Silver Shore have places that might pique the interest of strangers like yourselves. One such place is not too far from my school. No, I shan't go on about my school again, not to worry. But not too far from it lies the Aquaritum. It is a most fascinating place that has a collection of large aquariums, embalmed sea creatures, captured fish and strange discoveries from the bottom of the sea. It's actually the home of a gnome called Nirid Banding Coast. But for Silver, he opens it to anyone that wished to see his collection of sunken discoveries and even gives a tour of the place. I've been there a few times and I'm sure a group like yours will find it interesting. I personally am quite interested in knowing where and how he finds these curiosities. Perhaps he'll tell me someday. What else? Oh yes, Keystone also have a few guilds like most of the districts on the shore. There's the Council of Farmers and Grocers, the Stable Masters Guild and the Guild of Apothecaries and Physicians. The latter is an association of healers and naturalists, and when I say healers, I am of course not talking about the divine healing. But if you're looking for that kind of healing, you'll find plenty in Keystone. For you see, the Keystone district is home to the largest number of temples and shrines in all of Magnemar. Like the building there, that looks like it's better suited for a place in the mountains or some forest. That's Dead Eyes Lodge, a temple of Aristil. Father Lorgel Fenders takes care of the place and holds sermons three times a week. You'll see several archers from the church patrol the streets and help keep Keystone safe, all in the name of Old Deadeye. They're fine people, though them and the patrols sent out from the Church of Calistria have a habit of getting into conflict with one another. The servants of Irastil highly disapprove of the methods the patrols from the Church of Calistria use to stop crime. I can understand why. See, the Calistrian patrols tend to act like muggers and bullies towards, well, muggers and bullies. The Church of Calistria is right over there, as you might recognize from the black and golden dome with the thin spire on its top. That's the dome of the Savored Sting, and its current mistress is the elf Ayamira. You can go there as a worshipper, of course but the temple also acts as a brothel for those the church deems worthy of such services. Also, if you have the coin and the church deems it a worthy case, you can get help exacting your revenge on someone who wronged you. Such are the ways of Calistria, and Ayamira seems to take great pleasure in planning the revenge of others. Personally, I find it distasteful and very unelf like Further down that way, you have the Church of Erasma, 
the acolytes that serve the Lady of Graves tend to the city's small graveyards and the cenotaph in the capital district. They also help out midwives that are in need of assistance from time to time. The church is led by Anamentus Giverus. Like many of Erasmus' worshippers, he's a somber man of few words. That is unless you start talking about the Lady of Graves, of course. Then you'll have a hard time stopping him from talking. But I like that. I enjoy having conversations with the priests and clerics of the area, sharing our knowledge and all. One of my favorite places to go and have such conversations is the Sinishore Tower, a temple of Desna. Yes, I am very aware that an actual temple of Desna is rare, but so many Magnumarians worship her that it was decided to have one built. Named after Desna's home, the Sinishore Tower is a ring-shaped building that has an open-air courtyard. It is run by a lovely lady called Bivalu Simantiu. Perhaps you caught a glimpse of her when we first met? We have some pleasant conversations when we bump into each other, or when I have time to visit the temple. She prefers to keep to herself and tend to the tower grounds. Twice a year though, she goes on a month-long journey, traveling under the stars as she communes with the Song of Spheres. Before she leaves, she appoints a few local devout worshippers to tend to the tower grounds while she's away. It is a great honor, as I understand. Something not all outsiders know is that while you'll see temples and shrines to popular deities around the city, many Magnumarians also worship angels. At least, that's what people call them. In reality, they are worshipping Imperial Lords. The Imperial Lords are actually former angels that have become so powerful that they now are more than angels and less than gods. Demigods would be a fitting description. Now you'll find no such shrines dedicated to Imperial Lords anywhere in Magnema, or at least not public ones. The worship of the Imperial Lords is a private thing, born out of modesty and tradition, and is more of a personal pursuit than a public one. There are several small congregations or cults throughout the city dedicated to different imperial laws and if your interest is genuine, it shouldn't be too hard to be invited to one. And even if they don't directly worship them, most Magnumarians, especially those with Varisian descent, pay homage to the imperial lords. They've always had a special connection to Magnamar and some even say that the angel of the Arvinsor is an imperial lord. It's an interesting theory and not an unlikely one. But let us focus on the district. Keystone is also home to the Varician Council. The council used to lie in a building closer to the Silver Shore. But 11 years ago, the famous painter Goren Andusalo set fire to his studio which was a neighboring building to the council. No one really knows why he started the fire, but some say he was demented and that he suddenly went mad. Whatever the reason, the fire quickly spread to the surrounding buildings, killing over four dozen people, including himself. The area where the fire rage is now called the Burn, and no one ever tried to reclaim it or rebuild it, and so it has fallen into ruin. There are rumors that the spirits of those that died in the fire haunt the place. I can't say if that's true or not, but stranger things have happened, I suppose. But all of that is beside the point. We were speaking of the Varician Council, the third branch of Magnamar's government. Now the council lies down that way and has found a new home at the largest Varician camp in the district. See, the Varicians took the fire as an ill omen and moved to what in their opinion was a safer and more comfortable location. So now the council runs its affairs among the tents and wagons of the camp. The head of the council is Remaria Kalinova, an older Varician lady that does her best to take care of her people. She's lately been taking an interest in the city's Shuanti population as they lack any official representation. See, many of them have a hard time living in the city. I assume it's just not in their nature. Whatever the reason, it results in many of them being thugs and troublemakers, unfortunately. If she wants to represent them, She'll have a hard time convincing them not to form gangs and to respect the people they live with. And she'll have just as hard a time convincing the government not to discriminate or oppress the Shuanti in the city. I don't see her succeeding on any of those points, 
but I commend her for her effort. Ah, behold the great statue in front of us, Founder's Honor. The 50-foot-tall monument is made in honor of our great founder, the hero Alcadian Indros, and it is the first thing you notice when entering Castle Gate. Many Magnamarians pay tribute to him and leave flowers and offerings of fruit at the base of the statue. The government doesn't give the marches much extra, as said, for there is an exception for the area around Castle Gate and Founders Processional. They make sure that it always is clean and safe. It makes sense they would do that, as this is where most travelers from other places in Varisia usually enters. Speaking of someone who enters the city, I shall go and greet my newest pupil and bring him back to the halls of the school. I am pleased you chose to accompany me, and I hope I told you a thing or two you weren't already aware of. Across the road you'll find the Low Cleft District, which I am sure you'll enjoy. It's been an interesting conversation and a pleasure meeting you. Good day. Hello, strangers! You looking for a good time? A good meal? Some great entertainment? Sure you are. Why else would travelers like yourself come to the rubble? Well, I can show you where you can get all of those things at the same time. It's a little place called the Matador's Lodge, and it's at the other end of the district, and I can guarantee you there's nothing else like it. And you know what? As Lady Luck would have it, I'm actually on my way there right now, and it's the same direction as you're going. Why don't we walk together, and I'll buy you all a drink when we get there. Great. So what brings you to the rubble? Yeah, the rubble's what we locals call the Low Cleft District. Mostly because of the small but frequent rock falls that tumble down from the face of the sea cleft. But also because that's how some of the fancy summit folk describe the district based on its low morals. And by that I mean what some would claim to be low morals. But the snobs of the summit don't know anything about morals. There's simply just a free and creative spirit here in Low Cleft. I know it seems a little quiet right now, but it's also daytime. If you look, you can see dark curtains cover many of the windows around us. That's because Low Cleft doesn't really come alive until the evening, and most of the people working around here are sleeping right now. You try go for a walk around the district at night, and you'll see a completely different scene. The streets will be filled with people going from one place to the other, and many of the establishments will have lights of color that light up the street and attract customers. At night, Low Cleft is one of the most vibrant districts in Magnamar, and where you can see the city's true soul. See, it's a place for the senses and the here and now, a place where you can escape your boring life after hours of mindless work. People come here to have fun and enjoy themselves. The rubble is filled with pubs, hookah bars, brothels, dance halls, playhouses, and all sorts of entertainment. Sure, we're in the city of monuments and all that, but the rubble only has two noteworthy monuments, the Mapstone and the Silwinvian Charge. The Mapstone is a massive block of marble that protrudes three feet from the earth in one end of the Sea Spring Garden. The top of this marble block is carefully carved into a scale model of Magnamar. Artistic sculptors from the Church of Apadar do yearly touch-ups to keep up with the changes that happen in the city. It's impressive and all that, but so are so many monuments in the city. The same goes for the Silwinvian Charge. It's a monument given to the city by the elves of Mirani Forest. Something about Magnamar trying to secure a trade alliance with the elves, and they gave the city some stony seed pot as a token of good faith, or maybe as a symbol? You never really know what elves are thinking, do you? I'm told that the trade alliance never grew that much, but the seed pot sure did. Over the decades, it's grown into a 25-foot high tree sculpture. At least it looks like a sculpture. I mean, leaves grow from it and fall off like any other tree depending on the seasons, but it's a stony-like sculpture. I guess that's kind of impressive, but I've been here so long that to me, it's just that weird tree at the end of the district. But yeah, those are the only two noteworthy monuments of the district. Of course, the Arvin Soar also has its base here, stretching into the sky and connecting the rubble with the summit, but it's more part of the Neas district if you ask me. You probably heard the story of the angel on top of the spire saving the city from the storm and all that. I don't really care for such stories. Nah, the rubble's much more than monuments and stories and legends of old days. It's home to some of the most creative artists in the city, and I'm not talking about the fine artists and softies of the capital district, 
I'm talking about artists with soul and courage. And like I said, it's also home to a lot of establishments and places where you can get hammered and enjoy all kinds of entertainment. And of all the establishments in the district, the Matador's Lodge is one of the best. That's why you have to come inside to see it and have a drink with me. You'll enjoy it, I'm certain. I mean, that depends on what you're looking for, of course. I don't know, maybe you're more into whores and that sort of thing. In that case, you want to go to the Courtesan and Unicorn. It's a Harrow parlor where you can get a Harrow reading and a prostitute at the same time. <laughs> no, I'm not kidding. And trust me, the place pisses off a lot of Arisians. Apparently, many of them don't really like that their ancient practice of Harrow reading is being used that way. And so, the owner of the Courtesan and Unicorn, a Arisian woman named Benyavi Sanji, isn't too popular among her own people. As a matter of fact, she gets death threats all the time, and there's even been some that tried to assassinate her. More than once. But she's got a big crew of Shuanti bouncers that watch her back, and they're extremely loyal to her. She's got good reason to feel safe with them around. They're good protection, but they're also more or less idiots that hardly speak Taldane and work for favors from the whores that work from Benyavi. Imagine settling for that kind of payment. <laughs> dumb savages. If you're more of a Flayleaf kind of crowd, the Dreaming Dryad is the place for you. Even the building makes you feel like you're tripping. You'll see if you go there. When you look at the main entrance, it looks like you're looking into a beautiful glade. At daytime, you see the glade as if it was nighttime, and at nighttime, the glade is bathed in sunlight. There's of course some sort of magic going on to make it look like that, because that's not what it looks like when you walk in the door. The owner of the place is Vert Clytus, a Verizian man that does his best to make sure no one gets too much of a good thing at his place. See, it's an eatery and a tavern, but members can pay a premium price to enjoy several forms of safe intoxicating plants and chemicals, also known as drugs. Much of the establishment is underground, and even though overdoses can happen, Clytus goes through great pains to provide the cleanest and purest stuff. Sure, it's not really legal, but in the rubble, the city watch mostly just patrols the main streets. Many of the larger establishment pays mercenaries to provide street level security. Trouble is bad for business and scares customers away, but there has to be room for certain things, like the Dreaming Dryad. Most of the city watch knows what's going on, but look the other way. <laughs> More than a few of them use some of these illegal services themselves once in a while. If there's a city watch patrol that try to start some trouble, they're usually rookies and the mercenaries hired knows how to distract them and warn certain establishments before there's too much of a fuss. Don't you worry. Of course, everyone's a little extra careful when some of the nail knights stumble into the area, but it's rarely a problem. So sure, there's crime in the district, but it's not like Underbridge where you get stabbed for looking the wrong way. No, like I said, this is where the soul of Magnemar is. And like I also said, don't mistake it for being anything like the fancy pretentious places up on the summit. Down here's the real thing. Sure, the Gilded Cage is owned by the Vassad family, one of the richest families in the city, but they do their best to seem local. They enjoy the minor scandals owning such a place brings with it, as well as the free access to the most exclusive rooms of the establishment. The Gilded Cage is a flay-leaf den and a brothel that's built into the face of the sea cleft, and it's run by Jaylene Mordov a former prima donna at the Tridea that used to be known as Morning Dove. She still has her connections to the city's artistic elite and many of them visit the Gilded Cage. See, there's more than a few aristocrats that sneak down from the summit to see the soul of Lokleft. Another place that's owned by one of the great families in Magnemar is the Fancy Reef Claw. It's one of Magnemar's most successful breweries and it's owned by the Deverin family. Gulliver Haskinsworth a retired soldier from Taldor sees to the day-to-day -day business of the place. He offers 250 gold coins for a pound of fresh golden raspberries, which is an ingredient in some of the brews. Now you're probably thinking, that's a lot of money for some raspberries, and you'd be right, and there are some spots where plenty of golden raspberries grow. But these spots just happen to be in areas of the mushfin where you might run into giant poisonous frogs, giant dragonflies, and even into tribes of bogards. So they're not the easiest raspberries to pick. Sure, a group like yours might be suited for the job, but I'ma warn you, I've seen similar groups take up the task, and not all of them have returned, just so you know. Now we're almost at the Matador's Lodge. 
The Ravisian camp in front of us is one you'll do well to stay out of. See that wagon over there, with the two goons outside of it? That wagon belongs to the leader of the most notorious Scarny gang in Magnemar, the Gallo. His name is Jaster Fralino, and only fools get involved with him. People call that wagon the fish tank, and rumors say that inside is an aquarium with some fiendish fish in it. Apparently, untrustful business partners tend to lose an ear, a hand, or even worse in that tank. Yeah, he's the kind of guy you want to stay away from. Hello there, Niplo. Oh, gods. <sighs> you want to stay away from that guy as well. Niplo, my dear halfling. We need to talk. What is it, Finley? What? Hold up. Well, I'll be damned if it ain't my good friends from Sandpoint. What are you lot doing here? What? You know each other? Why, well, we certainly do. I told you, Niplo. I've got good connections outside the city. Yeah, and here I just thought you were talking out of your ass again. Ha! <laughs> Come now, Niplo. Why so hostile? We make such a good team. No. No. No, we don't. Every time I hang around with you, I get into trouble. What? The incident in Naios? Come on. How was I supposed to know that the Church of Abadar would call that stealing? Are you serious? Yes. All of those coins were just sitting there. Yeah, in a locked donation box. Ah, with a lock like that, it might as well have been open. Listen, forget about that. I'll need your help. No, not happening. Excuse us for a moment. Look, it's a small thing. Finley. Finley right well. Whoa. Please tell me you're not involved with Jaster Finley. It's complicated. Jaster, my dear friend, I was just on my way to see you. I'm not your friend. Do you have my goods? Well, me and Niplo here were just discussing the many possibilities on how to bring it to you. What? No, no, we didn't. I didn't. I don't care how you do it. You better do it. And soon. Jules here is itching to break your face. Ain't that right, Jules? Show sure is, boss. Look, you've got nothing to worry about, my dear Jaster. I better not have. You're expendable, right? Well, and so is your little friend. Remember that. Yes, <laughs> I'm pretty sure we won't forget that. Uh, I'd just like to point out... Shut up, Halfling. Yes, sir. Now, Finley, you and your little friend here better give me my goods, or both of you are going to the fish tank after Joel smashes your ugly mugs. <laughs> yeah. But, but I'm not... I told you to shut up. Yeah, you deaf or something? You shut up as well, Jolts. Oh, uh, yes, Jester. You've got one day, Finley, and there's not a place in the city where you can hide from me. Hide? While well, we wouldn't dream of it, my friend. I'm not your friend. One day, and if you don't return with my goods, I'll put a price on both your heads. <sighs> well, guess we're partners again, Niplo. You son of a cursed swamp fiend. Now Jester Felina wants to throw me in a fish tank. Well, not before Joel smashes your face. At least, that's how I understood it. Look, honestly, we've got very little time to waste. I... Yeah. <sighs> Meet me at the base of the Arvinsaur in an hour and bring a large sack. The Arvinsaur? What have you gotten me into? <laughs> it's not as bad as it seems. Now go on, we're in a hurry. How did this happen? I was... Ab <sighs> well, I'm sorry. I might have to leave you because apparently I have to save my own life. I sincerely hate you, Finley Ratwell. Really. <laughs> he, he doesn't mean that. And Jaster actually likes me too. He just likes to puff his chest out when he's grumpy. Offered me a job, actually, to deliver some goods to some nice people in Underbridge. Apparently, these goods were stolen, and apparently the people I was supposed to deliver them to aren't too happy with the fact that the City Watch confiscated them. Not like it's my fault. I, I barely got away myself. But yeah, now I'm in kind of a pickle. But I know how to set things straight, and then I'm done with this lifestyle. And I really mean that. Why don't you walk with me to the Duckway District? I've got to get some stuff there before I meet up with Niplo again. And I'm sorry I broke up your little walk, but if I know him, he wanted to buy you drinks at the Matt's Doors Lodge, didn't he? Yeah, he usually takes newcomers there, sits you down, gets you dead drunk while stealing all your valuables. He's quite good at it, but he's an even better burglar. And I need a good burglar right now. Without Niplo to scam you, the Matador's Lodge might be worth a visit, I guess. I mean, it's a popular place, but I'm not too fond of it, especially not the owner, Vasily Minvandu. He's a bit of a satis, really. The place is part tavern, part restaurant, and part rodeo. 
The matadors of the Serpents Run up in the Alabaster District perform at the Matadors Lodge in the off-season. The entertainment consists of bull baiting, horse breaking, cow catching and other brutal games that takes advantage of beasts of burden. Minmando takes quite some pleasure in the animal <laughs> suffering and is quick to tell you that if it hadn't been animals, it probably would have been people. A lot of decent folk don't like him and the Church of Desna and others have tried to get him investigated in hopes of shutting him down. But he keeps the matador sharp and that results in great entertainment at the Serpent's Run when it's bullfighting season. And we all know how difficult it can be to shut things down if the rich wants it to stay open. Well, time is not my friend. Come along. Just across the street lies the Duckway District. Well, as you know, I've got some pretty urgent business to attend to, but it was good to see you all, even if just for a short while. You should really go to the summit if you ask me. It's a lot nicer than down here on the shore. But first though, you have to experience the trade district that is Dockway. Uh, you there, my good dwarf. Good dwarf, a minute of your time. Yeah. What can I do for you, sir? Are you going further up the avenue of sails, good dwarf? Why, well, yes I am. Going to the bazaar of sails to sell these hats. I've got leather, iron with feather, and for all types of weather. A hat from trouble always makes your life better. Uh, yes. Well, my friends here will buy a hat, or even two, if they can ride with you as close to the summit as possible. They will, eh? Well then hop aboard, strangers. Thank you, good dwarf. Farewell, my friends. I have a feeling we'll see each other again at some point. If I'm alive, of course. <laughs> All right, I'm in a hurry. Good day. Welcome aboard. Trouble's the name, and I sell hats. But you know that already. So you're going to the summer, eh? Well, I could drop you off at the Bazaar of Sales. It's not too far from the rise that leads to the summit. Now, if you haven't been in the Darkway District before, prepare for a teeming place. From here to the Pissar of Sales, to down by the docks, there's life like nowhere else in the city. Down by Outcast Cove lies Magnemar's industrious harbor. There, ships with travelers and cargo vie for dock space, while storefronts and cramped businesses cater to your typical sea folk and exotic taverns and inns welcome visitors from afar. And as you can see, there's also plenty of traffic where we are right now. Even the sky is busy. I bet you notice all the fishing eagles flying about. There are so many of them nesting amid the crags of the sea cliff that a lot of people call the Darkway District the Eagle's Quarter. Darkway or the Eagle's Quarter, whichever you like, is Magnemar's Trade District. Here, you can always find something that makes you start spending your gold. For example, if you like auctions, you'll find a nice one by the piers down that way, at the Inpound Yard. They hold auctions of ships that have been abandoned in the harbor for more than 90 days. It's a high-risk auction because most ships don't go cheap. But there's one thing that makes these auctions very popular, and that's the fact that no one knows what's on the ship being sold. There might be nothing, but there's also the possibility that there's a chest of gold on it. Yes, it's a gamble, no doubt, but more than one lucky buyer has gotten a fortune of one kind or another by buying a ship at the impound yard. I myself couldn't afford joining such an auction, and I don't think I'd ever risk buying a ship. If there was nothing of worth on it, then what? I don't know anything about the sea. As fate would have it, I hate the sea. I don't even like lakes. Well, as I said, this is the trade district of the city and that makes it a fitting place for the Merchant's Guild Hall. Of all the guilds in Magnemar, the Merchant's Guild is one of the most powerful and it is financed by the Vanderels, one of Magnemar's most wealthy families. The fastest way to failure as a merchant is to get on the wrong side of the merchant's guild. Of course, they don't notice a small timer like me, but if you want to go big, they're hard to ignore. 
Darkway is also home to the Cobblers Guild, the Tailors Guild, the Brewers Guild, the Bakers Guild, and the Fellowship of Bartenders and Innkeepers. Guilds, 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 guilds. There's certainly plenty of guilds here in the city. Plenty of entertainment as well. And if you're looking for a certain kind of entertainment, <laughs> you'll find it at the Shocked Oyster. One look at the balconies of this four-story establishment, and I'm sure you'll know what I mean about entertainment. Equally split between prostitutes and gigolos, who are said to be very salacious, the brothel is a popular place. Just looking at those underdressed dwarves up there makes me blush. But I'm a happily married dwarf, and even though I blush, I'm far from tempted. You might be, though. The oysters, madam, is the half-elf, Sisha Rakas. Hello there, gorgeous. She competes fiercely with the House of Welcome, which is Magnema's finest and most expensive brothel, which lies up on the summit. And they don't just compete over customers. Oh no, the two establishments seem to have an ongoing feud about who has the most outlandish decorations. Word is that the House of Welcome recently added a Viren's head to its bar room, and Seisha is willing to pay good coin to get something better, whatever that might be. At the same time, the House of Welcome claims that the shocked oyster cheapens and demeans the act of love. <laughs> From one brothel to another, I guess if it's good to have standards, it must be even better to have double standards, eh? Some say the House of Welcome have pulled strings and got political figures to try and get the shocked oyster more regulated or even shut down. I don't know if that's entirely true, but if it is, those attempts have quickly been squashed. It's said that Sisha has some powerful connections herself, and I think there's more than a little truth to that. The Ravician camp right there looks like any other in the city, right? But I've heard rumors that the Wreckwash Blades hang around there. They're a Scarny gang that are said to be able to get a hold of any kind of information you need. Or any information about you that others might need. Like most gangs, it's best to stay away from them. Just a little warning for you. Another warning I can give you is, do not go to Nohorn. It is a seedy tavern that lies by the sea cliff. It's built from a discarded ship's hull and is barely standing. Went there last time I was here, and I promised myself I'd warn every person I ever talked to about going there. Even the bartender looks like a wreck, disfigured, and missing both ears. <laughs> no, if you want a proper tavern, you go to the Old Fang. It's one of Darkway's best, and old Madame Grottle will make sure you feel right at home. <laughs> She's a tough old woman, with the temper of an angry dwarf. She lost her husband to a swamp barracuda in the mush fence. But old man Grottle is not one to be trifled with, be you barracuda or not. Now, the very same barracuda's head hangs above her bar. <laughs> but if you're nice to her, she'll be nice to you. There's also the basilisk eye and the captain's club. Though you've got to be with a captain of a ship or be one yourself to get access to the captain's club. Owned by Liru Kantigi, it's Darkway's most exclusive tavern. Said to be beautifully decorated and have the ambience that suits a well-off ship's captain. The place attracts captains that need a break from the ruckus life aboard a ship. Some of the more rough and not so well-off captains call the patrons of the captain's club Wiley Livers. <laughs> I've never been, of course, so what do I know? Well, there you have it. The Bazaar of Sales. The largest free market in Marizia. The Bazaar is a welcoming chaos that offers you anything you need. Whether you're looking for spices from Assyrian, Marizian artifacts, fine silk from the continent of Tianxia, or just the best damned hats in the inner sea, you'll find it right here. This is as far as I can take you. Got a spot for my wares right here. And, um, you promised to buy a hat. Actually, you promised to buy two hats. Got to make a living, you know. Thank you for the talk, and... Excuse me, dwarf, but it's too silver to set up shop here. Why, yes, I know, young lad, but I've already paid in advance. You've got that in writing? Uh, I didn't get anything in writing, my good sir. Well, then you can't sell your wares here. What? 
but I paid in advance. I always do that, and for one call, I get the whole week. Don't raise your voice at me, Dwarf. What's going on here? He doesn't want to pay. But I already did. Calm down, both of you. Sorry, miss. Miss Calmaron, I paid your man last week. I didn't I get... I know, Trevor. Don't worry about it. Magni here is new. But, but, but I thought you said they had to have it in writing. Yes, if their name wasn't written on the list of prepaids at the shelter. Uh, I... Didn't read the list. You idiot. Go read it now and continue your shift. Sorry, I... Yes, get going before I regret hiring you. Uh, yes, ma'am. Damn youngsters. I apologize for that, Trevor. Next week will only cost you half. Thank you, Miss Calmaram. Who are your friends here? Oh, these are travelers that I gave a lift. They're heading to the summit. Travelers, this is Miss Sabria Calmaram, the princess of the market. Please, Trevor, you flatter me. Sabria will do. I'm headed to the Old Fang myself. You can follow me and I'll show you to the summit. You have a nice day, Trouba. Thank you, Miss Kalmaram. Good to meet you, travelers. First time at the bazaar of sales? Quite the market, wouldn't you say? It might look like one big chaos to newcomers like yourselves, but I can assure you there's an order all around you. And who am I, you might ask? Well... People who don't know me tend to call me the princess of the market. They call me that because of my father, Nasir Kalmeralm, who was the first prince of the market. But of course, what does princess of the market mean? Well, let's just say me and my court make sure everything at the bazaar runs as smoothly as possible. We make sure that Trade prices are fair, make sure to keep the peace between squabbling merchants, limit racketeering, and so on. The City Watch patrols the bazaar, but with the amount of people and traffic here, it's not an easy job. We simply help them out, and those who trade here as well. We take our share, of course, but most agree that it's a fair price and worth it. Like Trouba, many pay for us to keep a spot clear for them, for example. Some outside the bazaar may think of me as little more than some sort of gang leader, but I can assure you I am no Scani and no Night Scale either. Of course I have to enforce some rules once in a while, but I'm no thug and I treat people fair, as long as they show me the same courtesy. After all, that's what's best for business. We make sure people feel as safe as possible around here and know who's in charge. Me and old Ma'am Grottle at the Old Fang Tavern also have a cordial relationship and respect each other. Anyone causing trouble at the tavern will have to answer to me. Usually when they wake up after old Ma'am Grottle has knocked them unconscious. If you're a repeat offender at the Old Fang, you might get branded or even tattooed as a fair target for the city's Shuanti, Skani gangs or thieves' guilds. <laughs> That's how the rumor goes, at least. And there's no shortage of rumors in Magnamar. No shortage of monuments either, of course. That there is the eyes of the hawk. A monument that depicts the twin wizards, Kaelin and Rummer Vanderail, and their adventuring party, Eyes of the Hawk, as they battled the three six that came from within the Iris Ban. You probably already heard the story, and if not, I'm sure you'll find someone else who will tell it to you. Well, I'm off this way to the Old Fang. Go up that way, and you'll come to the rise, the way up to the summit. If you ever feel like trading at the Bazaar of Sales, come see me first. I might give you a good deal on a nice spot. Take care, travelers. Psst, psst. Hey, over here. Hey there. 
I notice you're all walking towards the rise. Going to the summit, eh? <laughs> They're all high and mighty up there, and good for them. But down here, not all of us are lucky enough to be born with a silver spoon in our mouth. Or even a wooden one, for that matter. I understand why you want to go to the summit. I would too if I could. But a fella like me quickly finds his way back down on the shore, usually with a little help from the city watch. <laughs> why don't you come and see the real Magnemar? The one the Lord Mayor and the Council of Ushers try to hide from visitors' eyes. Not just metaphorically, but literally hide us in the shadows of a massive blotty bridge. Oh, excuse my language. People tend to talk like trash in Underbridge. Maybe because most of them are trash. Why don't you come and have a look for yourselves? <laughs> don't let my appearance scare you. Rat folk like me aren't vicious or full of diseases like you might think. And even though our kind is rare in the city, we all get along quite well. <laughs> Besides, you look like you can take care of yourselves. And trust me, there might be something worth your time in under bridge. I'll show you a bit of the district for a single silver. Got kids to feed, you know, but I'm no beggar. A gold piece? Why, I must be blessed. Marillo Joxy at your service. You can call me Maury. Follow me, please. <laughs> Most call the Underbridge District the Shadow, and it's as slum as a place can be. Rubble and trash lie about the streets. The roads are mostly a muddy mess or straw-strewn gaps between houses. There are short stretches of cobblestones here and there, but they're broken and old. They say that the streets once were paved with stone tiles, but as the place fell more and more into ruin, they were dug up and sold off. <laughs> That's underbridge for ya. Down here, you best beware of who's lurking at you from the dark alleys. See, in the shadow, you never know when you might run into a Shanti or Skarni gang, or if the night scales feel like you owe them something. <laughs> and down here, you'd be hell of an optimist if you think there's someone from the City Watch coming to save you. <laughs> yeah, Underbridge is without a doubt Magnemar's most dangerous district. The government always act like they're going to clean up the place and make it a decent district. It's all talk, of course, and nothing ever happens. And for me, that might be a good thing. I'd like to live in a decent place with decent folk, but I'm not sure decent folk would like to live with me. <laughs> Besides, Several different churches of the city have made actual attempts to redeem and reform the lost souls of the district. The gods are listening. But it seems like most folk in Underbridge rather would live among the filth and danger than here. face the demands of faith and society. One faith that tried to bring light to the shadow was that of Saren Ray. Now, while her worship isn't unknown in Magnemar, there's no real church representing her in the city. But once there was, for a short while at least, <laughs> a Serenite cleric by the name of Voston came to Magnemar and saw that Underbridge desperately needed the guidance of his goddess. He built a small shrine to Saren Ray down here in the shadow. <laughs> he clearly didn't understand the nature of this place. A few months after he'd built his small church, him and two of his acolytes were approached by a Skarni gang that demanded protection money. The righteous fool refused. No. <laughs> and so the Skarni gang beat him and his acolytes to death. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know what he imagined would happen when he turned down the Skarni gang. <laughs> Boston and his acolytes were buried in a small graveyard behind the shrine, which still stands, but now it's an empty and abandoned place. No matter how long I've been in Underbridge, the massive pilings of the Iaspan 
never ceases to amaze me. They're a hundred feet in diameter and supports the deck 300 feet above us. There are ten in all, the four that still support the broken bridge and six ruined ones rising from the waters. The pilings all have their own names based on the engravings on them. The one there is called the Gecko and as you can see it has thousands of different carvings of geckos on it. It's well known that within the pilings are chambers, but it's illegal to damage, explore, or in any way tamper with the giant's bridge, pilings included. So you want to stay away from them unless you want the city watch on your tail. <laughs> That's one of the few things they actually care about down here. Besides, there are rumors about all the pilings, like the gecko there. It's said to be haunted, and some nights strange sounds are heard from within, and lights can be seen dancing around the piling's heights. It's also said that adventurers have entered the gecko only to come out with blank memories of what they experienced, while others simply never came out. <laughs> Even if you're the sort foolish enough to try and explore them, Despite my warnings, you'd first have to figure out a way to get inside of them. Now I don't know how to get inside the pilings, but I guess if you folk really wanted to, you could find an entrance. Besides the gecko, there's the gull, the harpy, the osprey, the salmon, the shark, the whale, the crow, the fire bell, and of course, the rat. <laughs> There is also another towering building down here, as you can see. The Shadow Clock. I guess it was built as a monument back in the day, but something must have happened to it over the years, because for as long as I've known about it, it's been a teetering structure of stone, wood and rusted metal. The clock face is frozen at three o'clock, and there's apparently no way to fix it. See? There are stairs inside that winds up to the four immense bells and clockwork at the top of the tower. But these stairs have been dubbed the terrible stairs. And for good reason. <laughs> See, on ten different occasions, someone has tried to climb the decaying stairs, and each time they fall into their death. <laughs> if you can't reach the clock, you can't fix it now, can you? After the last person fell to his death, officials closed down the tower permanently, and since then, it's just been standing there, looking like it might fall over at any moment. But the shadow clock is too well engineered to collapse on its own, and though there's been talk about tearing it down, it's too massive to do so safely. And the government doesn't even want to bother with restoring it. Why should they? It's hidden in the shadows, and restoring it might cost something. <laughs> so, it just stands there, towering over the district while being dwarfed by the Iron Span. Plenty of rumors about the Shadow Clock as well. Some say that the ghosts of those fallen from the stairs haunt the place. Others claim monsters that will steal your face roam the tower, while others claim something even worse lurks within. Might be there's nothing at all inside that tower. I don't know, and I don't really care to find out. But Underbridge in general has a lot of ghost stories and horrifying rumors. One in particular is the story of Mumble, the murderous scarecrow. He's said to have been roaming the streets of Underbridge for a hundred years, killing in the dark of night. There's even a nursery rhyme about him. <laughs> it goes like this. Mumble, mumble, scarecrow, alone in the maze. Sleeping in the daytime, a stitched man he stays. But when the moon she rises, up mumble gets. He shakes his hand at first and moves his feet next. And when the dog is snoring, and when you're fast asleep, Mumble Mumble Scarecrow will find you good to eat. <laughs> well, no one's ever seen Mumble, of course, so does he really exist? Or 
Did those who saw him just never live to speak about it? <laughs> who knows? But every time a dead body shows up and it isn't gang related, Mumble is always mentioned. It has to be Mumble. But I'm making the district sound worse than it is. Well, maybe I'm not. But there are some places in Underbridge that are more welcoming than... What? What the? <laughs> You like rhymes, Maury? You little. Well, here's one for you, you ugly rat. Mm. Ratty Maury, tell, tell a story. story. How did you get that long <laughs> tail? Why, Why do you, you have, have that, that awful, awful smell? smell? Why, Why do you, you even, even live in this place? place? Damn you, little rascals. <laughs> a place where no one likes your ugly, ugly rat, rat face. face. <laughs> <laughs> Rip your ears <laughs> off, you little brats. Oh, Maury. Oh, you mad rat. Damn kids. I don't know where they get the nerve to act like that. Sure, they think it's fun pestering me because of my appearance, but they should be more careful. No, no, not because of me, but because children aren't safe in Underbridge. The Scarny gang called the Creepers operate here in the shadows, and there's no limit to how low they'll go. They're known to exploit hungry and poor children as child labor. Even the other Skarni gangs regard them with disgust. Their leader is an evil Varisian bastard named Haugen. Beside whatever foul and illegal operation they've got going on at the moment, they do laundry, repair work, cleaning, and other tasks poor and desperate children can do to make an extra coin for the gang. Mild bastards. <laughs> Another Skarni gang operating in Underbridge is Dulon's lads. Led by a man by the name of Dulon Korveshku, they're the least successful of all the Skarni gangs in the city, and usually get by with begging, small time theft, and street corner scams. But for some reason, they haven't been that active lately. <laughs> I hear that leprosy has gotten its grip on the gang and that they are hiding inside of the rat for fear of being shipped off to an island leper colony. <laughs> now that's a horrible fate for them, isn't it? But I don't think most people would mind having one less gang in the city. <laughs> Before those rock-throwing brats came, I was about to tell you about a more welcoming place in Underbridge. Down by the water lies the friendly merchant. Well, it's a shabby tavern frequented by thugs, scoundrels and con artists, but at least you can get a drink and a meal. Just keep your back against the bar or the wall if you know what I mean. <laughs> the proprietor is Shov Casimir, an elf that controls Underbridge's best peers. He earns good gold on renting out his private dock for quite high prices. You can probably guess what kind of customers he has. <laughs> Smugglers and the type that use the docks as a safe place to offload illicit goods or passengers without risking an ambush from rivals or opportunistic criminals. Sure, the city guard raids the place once in a while. All right, let's have a look, boys. But Shav has good intel, and he's got lookouts placed around the district, ready to run down and warn him if a patrol is heading in his direction. So, it usually ends with them leaving empty-handed. <laughs> we could go in and have a drink if you'd like. I can tell you more about the district. No, eh? I understand. <laughs> The shadow really isn't the place you want to spend more time than you have to, is it? And who wants to be seen with an ugly rat like me, eh? Well, let me take you back to the rise then. There are much better and more safe taverns outside of the shadow anyway. I guess all things are better outside of the shadow. <laughs> Though we might have something of value down here. It's said that a very talented artist lives down here. A woman that makes sculptures for fancy customers up on the summit and throughout the inner sea. I've heard her sculptures often depicts intimate scenes between succubi. <laughs> her work is apparently quite popular, though who she is or where to find her is kind of a mystery. But rumors say she lives somewhere right here in Underbridge. I'm not an art person, so I never really looked into it, but maybe it's something you'd find interesting. <laughs> Alright, 
we're back at the rise. Thank you for the gold coin. Sincerely. Now you know a bit about the slum called Underbridge. <laughs> Enjoy the clean streets and the fresh air up on the summit. <laughs> Farewell, travelers. Hello there, good folk. New to the city, are you? Well, if so, then welcome to Machnamar, the city of monuments. If you want to experience some of the best entertainment in all of Western Varicia, you should come to the Triodea, Machnamar's most renowned playhouse and concert hall. It lies right here in the Neas district. All you have to do is walk down the Avenue of Honours and then turn left down the Lord Mayor's March. Tonight, the Inconstant Nymph is playing. It's a classic and very entertaining. What? If I can take you there? Um, I should be directing visitors like yourself to the playhouse. I've got an hour or so left before I'm meant to head back. Hmm. But I suppose there are lots of new faces by the Twins' Gate as well. All right, I'll walk with you down to the Lord Mayor's March. <laughs> I'm Sodra, by the way. I work at the Treadea, helping with whatever they ask me to do. It's not much of a job, but at least I stay close to the playhouse. See, I'm an actress myself, actually, or aspiring actress. But any time now, I will be noticed by Durston or Cassio, and who knows, maybe I'll get a part in the next great play. Oh, you're newcomers. Of course you are. That's why I approached you. You probably don't know Durston or Cassio well. Thurston Bassard owns the Triodea, and Cassiel Filmrain is a masterful dancer in alto that more or less decides what's what at the playhouse, and more importantly, who's who. The Triodea. Oh, just wait till you see it. It's a single building, but it has three performance halls. The grand stage is for operas and plays. The stone wall is an acoustically perfect concert hall, and the area is a raised rooftop stage for soloists. The building stands on the Star Silver Plaza, where the ground is inlaid with thousands of abalone shells, creating a scene of a thousand colorful stars. It really is something to behold. But I tell you, so is all of the Neos district. Some local aristocrats disparagingly call it the New Money District, but being extraordinarily snobbish never did anyone any good, and Neos is a welcoming and exciting place. Well kept too. No dirt roads with wooden beams here, like many places down on the shore. Here, the streets are paved with stones, and only the narrowest alleys have cobblestone. The city watch is ever-present, and there are residential neighborhoods, government agencies, and temples, all within walking distance of each other. Here are markets and tons of shops and merchant stalls, with everything from fortune-telling, groceries, fine clothes and chimney-sweeping services, to jewelry and magical items. There's even four guilds in the district. We've got the Glassblower's Guild Hall, the You're Groomer's beautiful. Guild, the Guild of Carters and Coachmen, and the Hunter's Guild. And that's just in Nails. You'll find a lot more guilds throughout the city. Now, there are two neighborhoods that dominate Nails. The Vista neighborhood, which has high-class shops, restaurants, businesses and the offices of globe-spanning mercantile concerns spread between the Avenue of Honours and the Sea Cleft. The other is the largest neighborhood on the summit, the Grand Arch. 
It stretches from the Twins' Gate to the heart of the upper cliffs. There are many well-off middle-class citizens and shop owners that live in that area, but there are also quite a lot of empty houses that are unoccupied for months of the year. These are the homes to merchants and travelers that have business outside the city for longer periods. But not all of them are empty, of course. I live there with my parents. My father is a lieutenant, and my mother is the sweet girl that fell in love with him many years ago. I now pronounce you husband and wife. I love them very much, and they love me. They've just been putting a bit of pressure on me lately. They want me to move out and do things a girl my age is supposed to. You're 22, Summer Sodra. You should be getting married and starting a family by now. <laughs> They're always trying to couple me with some noble son or some great soldier. But I'm not having it. I don't wish to be married with children. Not yet, at least. I want to act. To be on the grand stage and be in my element with the praise and the applause of the crowd. Imagine being rich and famous to get invited to the Osprey Club and party with other famous people and the wealthy families of Magma. What's the Osprey Club, you ask? Well, it's the tall building right there behind us. It only caters to the richest families in the city and their guests. It's such a fancy place. At night, it glows and shimmers in green and golden magical fire. Kayasi Sivachi <laughs> is in charge of the place, and she's supposed to be extremely talkative. <gasps> ah, yes, what I wouldn't give to see the inside of that place. But don't get me wrong, just being able to live as an actress would be great as well. I don't need to be rich and famous, I'll take what I can get. I'll even relish in the booze of the crowd as long as I get to be on stage. It's what I was born to do. Unfortunately, my parents never saw it that way and are pushing me too hard to move out and find a husband. Oh, I would love to have my own place without a husband. But the cost of living in the summit isn't cheap and they frown every time I mention moving to the shore. I don't know what they expect of me. I mean, sure, I'd love to live in a place like that, but that's probably never going to happen. That's the Kaijitsu Villa, by the way. Lately, their family seems to be more at home in the town of Sandpoint, up north, than here. As you can see, the place isn't in the best condition, and the family is here so seldom that many of the city's nobility are pushing for the Kaijitsu to sell or abandon their claim on the property, so others may buy it. Right next to the Kaijitsu Villa lies the Deveren Villa. The head of the Deveren family is Hobart Deveren, and he's probably the most laid-back aristocrat out there. People have dubbed him the Simple Lord. <laughs> he takes it as a compliment, and it is meant as one, at least when uttered by others than the elite. His niece is actually the mayor of Sandpoint, Kendra Deverin. The next villa you see is a bit different. That's the House of Welcome, Magnema's most exclusive brothel. Established quite some years ago by Madame Shubani Abantir, a woman that thought she was unable to carry children and so decided to turn her villa into a high-class brothel instead. Ironically, she got pregnant only two years after. Her granddaughter, Madame Ramika, now runs the place. Hello. And their customers are some of the richest people in Magnamar. I hear they have a bit of rivalry with the shocked oyster down in Dockway. Something about decor and values, I'm not really sure what that's about. Next to the House of Welcome lies the Defiance Garden. As you can tell, it outshines the rest of the villas here on the top of the sea cleft. It's home of our Lord Mayor, Halmir Globaras. It's really meant to be a diplomatic resort. It's not surprising Groboros moved in. 
He claims it gives him more peace and freedom to work. <laughs> more freedom to live in luxury, that is. He's basically just using his position to live like a king. Traditionally, the Lord Mayor lives in a normal residence among the people and not in a small castle filled with servants. Psh! But there are special rules for the Lord Mayor Groberus, I guess. Beside the Defiance Garden, you have the Arvensor, a building you no doubt saw even before entering the city. And I bet you've heard the legends as well about Ordelia Wilren seeing an angel atop the sea cliff spire and when a dark storm threatened to ruin the city she prayed to the angel and it saved the city. They say it took 18 years to build the Arvinsor upon the ruins of the sea cleft spire. It's also the tallest building in the city standing 400 feet tall. 400 feet tall! It's truly an architectural wonder. It's garrison to the city watch and military, and it has provisions to supply the city for at least a week, should we ever come under siege. But there are 400 soldiers stationed at the Arvinsor, and if ever need be, the city watch and local militia can be rallied within an hour, adding 900 warriors to Magnamar's army. There are also eight trebuchets standing ready at the tower. The lord of the tower is Commander Ismir Odenberg, my father's hero. He's a good and honest man, though unmovable in his convictions. My father reports to him directly, as does the head of the city watch, Captain Acacia Uriana. She's a feisty woman that speaks her mind. How do I know all of this? I told you, my father's a lieutenant. He always talks about these things. Ismir Odenberg is also a champion of Abadar. You know, a paladin. The Cathedral of Abadar is the largest of all temples in Magnamar, and it lies right over there by the Avenue of Honors. Dozens of acolytes, priests, and paladins serve at the cathedral, which, besides being a holy place, serves as the primary bank of all of Western Varicia. The church also helps the city watch with patrolling the summit. The highest authority at the cathedral, besides Abadar of course, is a just and fair man, Proctor Jaron Imikar. Bless you. Of Garundi descent, rumors claim that he once served the ruby prince of Osirian and still has contact with him from time to time. Can you imagine that? To know an actual prince? <sighs> Another holy site here in Neos is the fortress-like temple of Iomede. You can hear the daily calls to glory from here. The chaplain is Tira Ranova. She's a nice woman, but I just get such a sore head listening to all the preaching she and her clerics does. Sacrifice, honor, justice and valor, blah blah blah. That all might mean something to a warrior or those that worship Iomede, but I'm not really into all of that. I'll pretend I am, on stage, but that's as far as I'll go. Also, I worship the angel Asava. You know, True Spark? I feel a strong connection to her. Maybe it's because I love to dance so much. Right next to the temple lies Founder's Flame. A pedestal supports a bronze bowl with green oil and the nimbus of fire that changes color to an arcane rhythm and burns constantly. There are benches surrounding Founder's Flame at a safe distance. I sometimes like to sit there and get lost in the magical beauty of the fire. The Founder's Flame is but one of the many monuments in Magnema, a gift to the city in its early days. It was built by Anthelus Cadron, a hero of Magnema, that gave his life at the Battle of Chara. Yes, we've had our fair shares of heroes in the city. Like the two giant statues you see over at the Twins' Gate. Called the Guardians, these two statues depict the young twin wizards, Kaelin and Rummer van der Rael. They, of course, are the reason we call it the Twins' Gate. 
They saved the city in 4623 when the Shri Sikh came out from the Irish ban. I guess the time for heroes to save the city are over these days. Now we have the city watch, churches and the military to take care of trouble. Oh, and yeah, those fanatics at the bastion of the nail, the Hell Knights. At some point, somebody at the Justice Court felt like the city needed additional law enforcement. Enter the Hell Knights, more specifically the Order of the Nail, which is why many locals call them Nail Knights. There are not that many of them, but they are tenacious and you can almost feel them when they are nearby. Their commander is Paralitor Darren Holst, and if you ask me, him and his take their job way too seriously. I have a feeling that the Justice Court may have gotten more than they bargained for with the Nail Knights. They also hire out for private protection to those who feel the City Watch isn't capable enough, or if it's such a dangerous job that no one else will take it. Oh well, this is as far as I can go. Still working, you know, but the Triodea is at the end of Lord Mayor's March. If you do go and see the plate tonight, please mention my name, Sodra. I think the more people who mention it, the more Cashel and Dustin will notice me. You all have a great day, and I hope to see you at the Triodea tonight. Bye! Hello, good folk! New to the city, are you? Well, if so, then welcome to Magnamar, the city of monuments. No, that is just not good enough. If I ask you to pick it up, you will damn well do so. You hired Nokrom to protect you, not to be one who does everything you ask. What? You dare speak back to me? And in that tone? I can protect you from your enemies, but I cannot help you with your own laziness. You drop the scroll. It should be you who pick it up. Why, I have never, ever, you are fired. Hmm. That does not bother Nokron. You are not worthy of the protection I offer. Not worthy? How dare you? Everyone in my social circle told me, do not hire Shuanti. They're unreliable, savage, and dumb. How bad can it be, I thought. But now I see just how bad. You stupid brute. Do you think growing out your hair makes you civilized, hmm? hmm. I shall take my business elsewhere and make sure to spread the word that Norcram... Norcram. Whatever silly name you go by, it's a savage and cannot be trusted to do his job. Uh, you there, you look like a capable group. How would you like to earn some gold? Say no. He will ask you to clean his house and then his backside. Why you, you, you are finished in this city. I'll make sure of that. Excuse me. I am sorry, but you should not work for such a person. I hope you do not see me as your enemy now. Good. I am not looking for any trouble, but I will not be treated like this man tried to treat me. I was hired to be his protector, not his slave. Now I must find another way to earn coins that I may survive in this place. It is hard for a Shuanti to find honorable work in this city. I guess it's even harder to find honorable work when you have lost your honor. I used to be of the Sri Kiri Kwa, the Hawk Clan, but I was banished from my tribe for breaking the laws of my people. I am Nokrum, once known by my people as Nokrum Fire Soul, but now they know me as Nokrum the Shamed. I cannot change that now, so I try to live a new life here, but not everyone in the city welcomes a Shuanti with open arms. I usually keep to myself, but there are many of my people that do not understand or accept the ways of the city, and many of the Shuanti that live here hold on to the fierceness and rage that is needed to survive in a place like the Cinderlands. The rules are very different in a city like Magnamar, 
and not every Shuanti likes to follow those rules. The Shuanti gangs in the city are the worst example of my people, and I wish to stay as far away from them as possible. Just remember, there are also good Shuanti in the city. I must continue on my path and find a way to survive in this strange wilderness you call civilization. May the spirits watch over you on your travels. Oh, would you stop, you dumb mules? Hello there, strangers. So how polite you were with that shanty fella there. Very interesting. Are you always this polite to strangers? They get misunderstood a lot here in the city. And as a gnome, I sure know what that feels like. I'm Tifer Tinker, and I'm headed to the golem works with this piece of junk. Want to join me? There's more than enough room for all of you on the cart, and the way through the capital district is quite interesting, and the golem works is right by the most amazing feature of the city, the airspan. Ah, I knew that would get you interested. Hop aboard. You're an interesting bunch. I like interesting things. And bunches. Gnomes usually do. What? Ah, come on you two. You're stronger than that. They're complaining about the extra weight. Don't mind them. Oh yes, I talk with them from time to time. A lot of gnomes are able to speak with animals. And even though these two aren't very bright, I still get the gist of what they're saying. And they do the same with me. But you're probably more curious about the constructs sitting next to you. Perhaps you've seen some of them around here on the summit? They're angelic guardians, and the most popular of all the constructs made at the golem works. They're obviously inspired by Varisian depictions of angels, but don't let that fool you. They're designed to watch and protect their masters, and are terribly good at it. These automatons might look like angels, but they will unleash hell on anyone trying to hurt their masters. Like I said, they're made at the golem works, which is a very interesting place. That's why I work there. Now, when you see it, it just looks like a collection of warehouses, but inside is a prestigious workplace. The Golem Works creates all kinds of constructs and receives requests from as far away as Katapesh and Absalom. Now, the Golem Works mostly create automatons. The creation of actual golems only happen a few times a year, but they of course also bring in a much larger income. The Golem Works was created by Toth Breacher when he discovered that the stones from the airspan had properties that were perfect for the creation of animated life. Now it's illegal to tamper with the airspan in any way, but enough rock has fallen from the bridge to give the Golem Works and the city stonemasons a supply that will last for decades, maybe even centuries. The Golem Works lies in the Bridgeport neighborhood where you'll find plenty of craftsmen and artists. Here are woodcarvers, sculptors, jewelers, and all manner of artisans who work in rare mediums, even magical. The shore is not the only place where you'll find creative and hardworking folk, or guilds for that matter. Here in the capital district, we have the Benevolent Order of Scribes, the Carver's Guild, the Goldsmith's Guild, the League of Jewelers, the Quarriers Guild, and the Solemn Order of Sages, Librarians, and Teachers. Listen. So, a fair share like most districts of the city. <laughs> what? Ah, you would say that. They like to smell better on the shore, they say. Mules. But, there's more to the Capital District than that. The Capital District is also where Magnemar's government is centered. In a moment, we'll pass by the Usher's Hall and the Pediment Building. The Usher's Hall is where the most powerful political institution in Magnemar has its home, the Council of Ushers. The Council is an assembly of the eldest, most experienced, and most influential community leaders that are overseen by an executive moderator. The current moderator is Lady Vereen Katil, an elf with a commanding presence. But the Council of Ushers isn't what it used to be, if you ask me. When first created, it was 15 members of the most active and outspoken family leaders. Now, there are 117 members and some of them are greedy merchants and power-hungry schemers or bored aristocrats. Of course, there are still many that are passionate and truly care about the citizens of Magnemar. If you wish to speak to a member of the council, you'll first have to speak with Jaquildria Quildarmo. She's the whole seneschal and decides whether or not you can get an appointment. I hear she can be a real bucket if she doesn't like you. 
a pediment building that stands near the usher's hall is where you'll find the Justice Court. Thirteen justices formed this court, and they spent their time interpreting the few laws the city has and settled disputes and passes judgment in cases that can't be solved by the city watch because they're either too complicated or too horrible. They're led by one of their own, Lord Justice Bale Argentine. I sentence you. But the justices are not the only ones that hold office in the pediment building. The office of Lord Mayor Haldemir Groboras is within the walls of the building as well. Now a lot of bad rumors are going around about the Lord Mayor, especially down on the shore. No, we're not going down there now. Rumors claim that he's a triple chin self-serving politico that doesn't care about the underprivileged of the city or anything that doesn't in some way or another benefit him. Now these rumors are mean-spirited and as far as I can tell, completely true. There are those that claim that these rumors aren't true and that the Lord Mayor is a nice man and I haven't met him personally, but he's paunchy, wears expensive clothes and has an aura of arrogance surrounding him. So I choose to believe what I've heard. Be interesting to meet him though, more specifically the servant gifted to him by the golem works when he was instated as Lord Mayor. A clockwork golem, now that's interesting. Directly under the pediment building lies the hells. Treason is the only crime punishable by death in Magnemar, so of course the city has to have a large prison and it's not a nice place, so the hells is a fitting name. Several levels make up the prison blocks with detention cells and guard barracks on the uppermost wings. The lower one gets, the more dangerous the prisoners get as well. Murderers, rapists, demonologists, cannibals and the utter evil and insane are kept at the lowest levels. Ever heard of Sir Aaron Tarvengian? Interesting fellow. An evil madman, but interesting. A descendant of one of Magnemar's founding families, said to have been a very charismatic man. Well, he poisoned his own family and four visiting dignitaries from Andoran and sacrificed them to some demon lord. It is said that the poison paralyzed them, but they all were fully aware of what was going on as the demon accepted the sacrifice. And people say gnomes are weird. When the authorities found out, they threw Sir Divention into the lowest levels of the hell. The Hells is an interesting place, though not a place I feel compelled to see. But that's not why you came along with me, is it? To hear about government officials and mass murderers? No, you're in the city of monuments, and there are much more interesting things to talk about. Not too far from the pediment building lie several grandiose structures that make up the Founder's Archive and the Museum of Ages. These buildings house the history, findings and collections of some of the city's most esteemed citizens. There are some very interesting displays at the museum, like the Eye of Rakshan, a petrified cyclops eye, and the gemstone regalia of King Chardis Porphyria III, and many more. Dr. Ernst Landis is an esteemed scholar of Arisian history, and he curates the Museum of Ages and Madame Ibra de Mirios more or less rules the Founder's Archive. They're both interesting places, you should go there if you have the time. Ah, and behold, Indros Kul Vyadrach. The marble statue depicts the legendary battle between Alcadian Indros and the monstrous Vyadrach, one of the more famous monuments in the city. Some say you can be blessed by the monuments if you show them the proper respect. It sounds interesting, but honestly, I have no idea what it actually means. Alcadian Indras is Magnemar's greatest hero, and you'll see many monuments depicting him throughout the city. Even the mules like him. Yes, Magnemarians respect and honor him greatly. See that cylindrical building there? That's the Cenotaph, one of the tallest structures in the city and another monument built in honor of Magnemar's most beloved founder. Meant to be an empty tomb, honoring Alcadian as the years passed and his family and friends went to be judged by Farasma, an inordinate number of residents requested to have their bones buried within the Cenotaph or on the ground surrounding it. As a result, 
Catacombs were built underneath the memorial. Now it is tradition for those who can afford it to be buried beneath the stones surrounding the cenotaph or within the catacombs. The square surrounding the monument make up what's called the Mourner's Plaza. Priests of Erasma patrol the grounds, keeping the monument and catacombs free of scavengers, grave robbers and the undead. Interesting, yes? Another most interesting place here in the capital district is the Lord Mayor's Menagerie, a public park curated by the Hyde March family where many of their taxidermy trophies and live captures are displayed. Trust me, you will not be disappointed if you go there. But now we've reached my favorite place in all of McNamara, the Golem Works. As I said, I work here on golems. It's quite an interesting job. Oh, Tiefer. Hello there, Jaranine. Got a broken angel for you. Bring it over to angels, are you? So they got me fixed, you know? <laughs> yes. We well, fix the rest of her, sir. Let me get to the workshop. All right, Jaranine. I'm off to get a defect garden keeper. All right, Tiefer. See you later with the good lights and chat. Full of bush, you good day. See you soon. Yes, yes, indeed. That's Jaranin, a fellow gnome that no one can understand, but he sure knows his craft of fixing and improving automatons. Well, it's off to Fort Indra's for me. It lies in the Alabaster District. I can take you there if you want. Oh, you mule, stop complaining. All right, on we go. As you can see, behind the golem works lies the air span, also called the Giant's Bridge. Visible from miles away, the ancient basalt bridge is a remnant of ancient Thassilon. It stands 300 feet above Underbridge and is also 300 feet wide and 50 feet thick. Four of its pylons still stand, carrying what's left of the deck, and six broken lies out in the waters. When McNamara first was founded, lots of rubble from the iron span lay about the shore and land and gave the founders a great source of building material. Many of the oldest and more elegant buildings in McNamara have a degree of iron span basalt in them. And I can tell you, it's the best building material you can find. Hard as iron, but retaining its stony features for carving and building. Magic runs through the basalt that is so ancient that it somehow has become part of the stone itself. And like I said before, it's also extremely well suited for building constructs. So why not just use the bridge for every building in the city? There's a giant bridge, after all. Well, back in 4623, the Lord Mayor at the time, Varnagan Draston Mier, thought it would be a good idea to quarry stone directly from the air span to construct the new city wall and to use for the rising Arvensor. Some found this a bit unnerving, especially the miners faced with mining stone some 300 feet above the ground. There had long been rumors about the air span being hollow and only a few days in, quarry has proved those rumors to be true. Workers found partially collapsed hallways, and soon after, a vast and dark chamber. It is said that there was a cacophony of skittering from deep within the dark that drew nearer and nearer. Hundreds of eight-legged man-sized spider-like horrors came from the darkness. These repulsive monsters are known as the Three Six, and they tore through the city, maiming, killing, and abducting hundreds of Magnamarians. But two heroes, the twin wizards, Kaelin and Romra Vanderhael, rose to the occasion, and together with their adventuring company, the Eyes of the Hawk, they rallied the local militia and drove the three six back into the bridge. Since then, any tampering with the Iron Span has been illegal. Quite understandably so. It's also forbidden to build anything within 50 feet of the bridge. It's a shame those damned three six are inside the bridge. Could be very interesting to see what else is inside the air span. Well, my friends, as we cross the Boulevard of Messengers, we officially leave the capital district and enter the Alabaster district. I'll be heading left to Fort Indras from here. Right in front of you is Alabaster Park, a nice place to stroll or sit down to relax. It was interesting meeting you. Maybe we'll see each other again sometime. 
I'm usually picking up or delivering automatons at the Golem Works. Have a good day. <laughs> oh, be quiet. They'll get a carrot on the way back. I say, are you lost? You do know the Serpent's Run isn't open till tomorrow, don't you? Oh, you're not here for the Serpent's Run? Well, in that case, I must inform you that there are public parks down on the shore. The Sea Spring Garden might be a place for you. I do believe you'll fit in quite nicely down there. When people stroll here in Alabaster Park, I don't think a group of, well, let's be honest, unfashionable rabble like yourselves are what they hope to see. I'm sorry if you take offense to that, but I'm simply being honest. Are you adventurers and you're not here for the Serpent's Run? Simply exploring the city, eh? So far at least. Well, in that case, I'll allow you to escort me to the House of Lords. It's by the other end of the district. I'll give you a little tour on the way. Quite the privilege, actually. Let me introduce myself. I am Lawrence Vanderell of the Vanderell family, perhaps the most successful family in all of Magnamar. Along with the Androses and Cadrons, we are also among the oldest families in the city. We control the Merchants Guild and therefore control much of the trade in the city. As you can guess, that makes us quite rich, mm-hmm. Well, let's walk. This here is Alabaster Park. While most residents in the Alabaster District have their own private gardens, this is a nice place to socialize and enjoy a well-prepared lunch. It is also where many of the guests of the Serpent's Run come after a successful event. It is a public garden, but it is really for the... Yes, well, the wealthier and more educated citizens of Magnamar. After all, it does lie in the Alabaster District, where aristocrats and the most rich and affluent citizens live. The lower classes of society only come here for events held at the Serpent's Run, and they of course enjoy the park at such times as well. Unfortunately. But it's unavoidable, for the Serpent's Run is the most famous attraction in all of Magnemar. It's a large hippodrome that can seat up to 5,000 people where games, battles and sporting events take place. There are events at least two to three times a month. The Serpent's Run is mostly active in the spring and summer. And in the summer, which is high season, there can be several events a week. Many different events are held at the Serpent's Run. My personal favorite is the Golem Battles. Every spring, there's a week-long series of golem battles sponsored by the Golem Works. Wizards and the like are invited from all over Varicia to test their constructs against those of the Golem Works students. There are great prizes to be won, including gold, magic, or construction contracts offered by the Golem Works. It is also during the summer that you can find more violent entertainment at the Serpent's Run. Bullfighting events are some of the most popular among Magnamarians. There are organized tournaments and the winner can walk away with up to 2,000 gold pieces. If you have a taste for even more violent thrills, hide your baiting is the thing for you. Here, um, types like yourselves can show their prowess against captured but still very deadly hydras. Though only alchemist fire is allowed to be used to stop the creature from regenerating and not magic. So, as you might guess, there's a lot of risk involved. There are, of course, more sensible events as well, like decathlons, animal races and mock gladiatorial battles. Jorsten Drowade, also known as Axe Tongue, is master of the games. He's a vigorous dwarf that organizes events and ensures fair competition. And though hydra baiting and bullfighting can be quite bloody, he refuses to hold events that he labels as blood sports, where two thinking foes battles to the death. Of course, that leads to some debate and anger among the city's naturalists as they see bullfighting and hydra baiting in a different light. Behind us, at the most northern end of the district, of the whole city really, you have the Stylo Bait neighborhood, segregated from the lower districts by steeply canted marble inlaid walls, well-guarded stairs leads to the prominent avenues of the neighborhood. 
It is in the style of bait that Fort Indra looms. The fortress stretches 100 feet into the sky and has a strategic strong position over Magnamar's coast. Trebuchets and ballistas are ready to rain down destruction on any pirate foolish enough to attempt an attack on the city. But the mere sight of the fortress is usually enough to scare away anyone with such intent. It is overseen by Commander Vans Vinmere, a stout and good-hearted dwarf with a powerful and at times somewhat intimidating presence. The fort was one of the first structures to be built in Magnamar's early days and it was designed by Alcadian Indras himself. Barracks, warehouses, offices and homes of those who keep the fort running can be found further down in the Stylobate neighborhood as well as Indros Manor that is home to the descendants of Arcadian Indros. It's a fine manor and the Indroses are well respected of course, but they're not as influential as one might think. Their role in politics has become more ceremonial than anything else and they are not really seen as leaders of Magnamar anymore. Arcadian Indros is without a doubt the most revered of Magnamar's heroes. After all, he is the founder and the one who named the city Magnamar. It is a translation from his order's ancient tongue and it means Stone of the Sea. So a great hero he is, but other families have legendary heroes to their name as well. My family, of course, had the twins Kaelin and Romer van der Eyl that stopped and drove back the Shrisix. But we also have Miss Lee van der Eyl, a member of the Wardens of the Eye. Her irresistible charm was significant in establishing Magnamar's status as a trade port. She also had a public duel with a Corvosan prince and won not only the duel, but Magnamar's independence from Corvosan influence as well. The Cadron family had Anthelus Cadron, famous hero from the Battle of Charda. The Derexi family had Aiton Iodo Derexi, famous bodyguard to Alcadian himself, also known as the fifth Phantom. The Catrin Villa lies within the Stylobate district as well. They are also one of the founding families of Magnamar, and like Anthelus, they have a strong focus on magic. So Mandy Catrin recently inherited the mantle of matriarch of the family after her parents disappeared during an expedition to a mysterious fortress known as Viper War. I can't fathom why anyone would go to such a place. You're adventurous. You must know, why do you risk your lives and sometimes worse, running around places best forgotten? Fortune? Glory? Ha! Huh. I can tell you, there's plenty of both in being a successful family in Magnema. Your way of life seems silly, but it probably comes down to your lack of education. The Cadron family, on the other hand, like most wealthy families in Magnema, value education highly. They sent their scions out to the best and most prestigious magical schools in the NSC. Uh, not the Academy in Corvosa, obviously. The family are also strong supporters of the Golem Works, though not full-on sponsors, as they feel industry and nobility should be kept separate. The Nirodin Villa also lies in the Stylo Bait. Shiskaya Nirodin is a member of the Council of Ushers, and she runs the estate. There are unfounded rumors that she somehow is in league with Corvosan interests, but those rumors are simply based on her fascination with Corvosan decor and nothing else. You should pay them no mind. Other prominent families make their home outside of the Stylobate neighborhood, mainly in what we call the Marble District. Along with the Stylobate, the Marble District is the most prestigious place to live in all of Magnemar. It is the very part of the city we are in right now. Here are beautiful townhouses, small villas and estates of some of the city's noble families. The Scarnettis, the Mindurians, the Valdemars, the Versades and of course House van der Eyl. The Scarnetti family are perhaps the most successful of what we call the new blood nobility. They have control over Magnemar's shipyards and are known to have very little tolerance with the shanty of the city. Some rumors claim they've even paid Skarni gangs bounties for shanty emblems. But then again, there are always unfounded rumors circulating about successful people. Even if the Skarnitis dislike them more than most, I'm sure they have their reasons. 
The Shanti are, after all, rude and savage in nature, generally. I'm sure there are exceptions. The Scarnetti family is run by Graydon Scarnetti. Never mind. He's a humorless man with a constant frown on his brow, and he's not afraid to make enemies in order to keep the family strong control of the shipyards. But fortunately, Graydon's mother, Yortilia Mendian Scarnetti, is the true leader of the Scarnettis and intervenes when Graydon makes unwise decisions and needs a nudge in the right direction. Because I said so. So I've been told, at least. The Mendirians were originally hired by the city's founders to help design Magnemar's more important buildings and have gone from hired stonemasons to aristocracy over the years. Filuvia Mindurian is the head of the family and she's a well-known gossip among the nobility. Oh, hello. House Valdemar used to be one of the most successful families in Magnemar, but it seems like they have fallen on hard times. The family have interest in fishing, logging and shipping, but competition from the Scarnettis seems to be wearing on them. Their villa is overseen by Caleb Valdemar and he seems to have his hands full. His father, Ethram, is the patriarch of the family, but he lives in Sandpoint, and rumors among the nobility is that he has fallen ill. Caleb isn't out in public as much as he used to be, and those who know him say that the last couple of years have taken their toll on him, and that he isn't quite the same man he used to be. Then there is House Versad. It is well known that no one throws a better party than Savasha Versad. They are amazingly fun and the most sophisticated and popular people are always invited. I would tell you to join next time, but I doubt you would be invited. It requires a certain position in Magnamarian society. I can tell you, no expenses are spared at these parties, and they really are worth the headache the day after. The Versards also own a place down at Lowcliffe called the Gilded Cage, and they seem to be quite proud of the place. Why, I don't know. It's mostly rabble from the shore that frequents the place. They do, however, own another place that is more suitable for a family of their position. The Triodea, a wonderful playhouse that is located in the Neos district. If you get the chance, you should go there. Other notable families in the Alabaster district are the Rexies and Hyde March. The Rexies are a special kind of family. They don't accumulate wealth from trade or industry, but from... Yes, well, I guess you would call it mercenary work. The family's scions are actually a team of well-trained adventurers, much like yourselves. Other aristocrats and important families hire the group to solve unusual and dangerous problems. They're an odd bunch. The eldest of the Derexi scions is Luma Derexi, sure. and it is said that she's a druid living in the city. Now, if that is an odd, I don't know what is. She's an illegitimate child as well, half elven. I don't know the story behind that or which elf her father, Randit Derexi, have been fooling around with. He himself is the patriarch of the family and a member of the Justice Court. And then there's the Hyde March Manor. Sir Knaven and Sheila Hyde March are some of the more eccentric people in Magnamar. Their estate is not only their home, but it is also the first Pathfinder Lodge in Varizia. As you already might have gathered, I don't really understand the need for adventuring, let alone pathfinders. They apparently offer other pathfinders to stay at their manor as well. Why anyone would do that is beyond me. It all sounds very cult-like, if you ask me. But they are wealthy, polite and nice people, and they are a part of Magnamar's elite. At the end of the district, you have the House of Lords. All of Magnamar's seven major families holds office here and are open to the public during daylight hours. It's a place where citizens can air grievances, ask for favors and request something of Magnamar's nobility. How can I help you? I often sit here and have to listen to a lot of rubbish, of course, but there are also matters that House Vanderil are willing to help with and understand. And so it is with other houses as well. Now, I leave you to explore the rest of the city for yourselves. I'm sure you feel honored that one of my social standing took the time to show you around, but really, it was my pleasure. The gate at the end leads to the Lost Coast Road. I bid you good day and good luck on your future travels or adventures or whatever it is you do. Goodbye.
out of the way, mister. Well, excuse me. Apologies. He's a bit cranky. Rabble. Whoa. Friends. So, you made it up here. A bit more luxurious, right? Finley, now's not the time for lingering. No, it's not. Good to see you again, my friends. We unfortunately have to leave the city for a while. <laughs> Things don't always turn out as planned, do they? Not with you, Finley Radwell. Not with you. But we're headed to another city that Niblo knows. Fair Lager. Care Marga. Care Marga. I hear it's a lovely place. I wouldn't call it. That. Hey, you! Stop! Oh, well, yeah. That's our cue. Yes, it is. See you around, adventurers. Let's go, boy. Stop Let's him. go. Stop him now. Take care, and if anyone asks, you haven't seen us. Fare thee well, my friends. Fare thee well. Yeah. <laughs> Greetings. Thank you for watching the Tower of Tomes. If you like the content and would like more lore and stories and don't want to have to wait two to six months for your Tower of Tomes knowledge and entertainment, please have a look at the Tower of Tomes Patreon page. There will be a link in the description. Also, if you're not a subscriber to this YouTube channel, please consider subscribing, liking and commenting. Once again, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it.